Good morning, everyone. We'll be starting about five after the hour. But in the meantime, if you have a moment, feel free to put in the chat uh, what part of the world you're in. And if you your chosen pronouns is always nice. And uh, also, if just uh, if you want to share a little bit about what 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 energy you're bringing into Shabbat today into this service. And we'll get started in a few minutes. Also, I'll mention for later on in the service, we will be doing a humanistic a Kedushan Motzi. So if you want to have wine or juice handy and bread, that would be helpful. And then at the close of our service, we have an optional uh, art activity. Um, again, it depends on your level of Shabbat observance. Uh, some people who are more traditional do not engage in creative acts on Shabbat, and that's fine. But for those who are who are more um, who have a different Shabbat observance, uh, we will have a short activity afterwards, and we're kind of just framing this as being a little bit of an oneg time. Uh, we usually have some time to visit, but we would do a little art as well. So for that, for the art activity, what you need is a piece of paper and then something to draw with. It could be a pencil, it could be a pen, it'd be colored pencils, markers. You have lots of different options. So anyway, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. And I'm eating a couple more bites of food. So I'm going to turn off my camera for about two minutes while I do that. So I'll <laughs> see you in a moment. Mm. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> sleepy. Don't know why. Valerie, all the pictures in your screen of those bells. Wh where is that? What's the story of that picture? That is in Molise, Italy. My ancestors, um, the, the irony, my Christian ancestors have been making the bells for the Vatican since the 1100s. Oh, wow. How so, interesting. Thank you. Valerie, your chat text says morning. Is that, uh, are you in morning or is it just morning there? In morning. I, we lost my mother-in-law a few days ago. I'm very sorry to hear that. Thank you. I forgot how to say that in Hebrew. It's okay. I wouldn't have understood it, so I appreciate it. <laughs> It's not uh it's not Rufu Ashlima, that's if someone is sick, right? I know in English sometimes people say, May their memory be for a blessing, but um I forget how to say that in Hebrew. Yeah, unfortunately my Hebrew is down to a few rudimentary words. It's uh, my family, the Sephardics, I can I'm better at Ladino than I am at Hebrew. Oh, what would it be in Latino? Yeah, understanding, not not speaking, understanding, big difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I recently had the chance to take part of a course in Ladino, and I really enjoyed it. The problem was it was at 6.15 in the morning, my time, because it was from the Oxford School of Rare Jewish Languages in the UK, which was wonderful, but it was a live class, and the time I finally, I gave up, I couldn't. I just could not think in a different language at 6.15 in the morning. Mm -mm, mm -mm. My my having some basic Spanish, like elementary Spanish knowledge from my family being in Caribbean, it, it's easier for me to, to pick up the Ladino than it is, of course, Hebrew, because it's really close. Mm -hmm. I think what was challenging me too in, in the Ladino class, they mostly used a Hebrew script Mm -hmm. instead of the, the script you usually use for Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so that was challenging. Um, some of, some, I mean, there was a system to it. It was, I mean, to me, it reminded me a little bit of Yiddish, which is basically mm -hmm. a form of German written in Hebrew characters. It was kind of like that, but there was a part of me that just kept thinking, I wish we could just write this in Latin characters and it'd be, you know, but, you know, that's, but, but the problem is for people studying Ladino, usually they're wanting it to read an old text. And those old texts are mostly written with that Hebrew script. So, yeah. But someday I'll do it again. Um, but maybe whenever they offer it at a more reasonable time of day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that would be quite difficult to learn anything at 615 in the morning, especially if you're busy and you already have a, a load of stuff on your plate. Mm -hmm. I uh, I just looked it up. It's uh, the other. It's a Zecher. Sadiq Livracha, which I don't know whether that would be humanist because it says blessed, but 
means um, we may the righteous be remembered as a blessing. Thank you. I, I think it still works because um, we often use wording of blessing um, in a lot of a lot of our liturgy. So I think that's that that still works. Well, I think it's time to go ahead and we'll go ahead and get started. I want to welcome everyone to our service today from the Spinoza Havra. And before we go on, let me just double check, make sure the recording is working. We, Yes, it is. Okay, good. Our last service, unfortunately, uh, we um, didn't remember until a few minutes in. So um, anyway, I want to double check that. You anyway, know, thank you everyone for, 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 for coming today. A few little housekeeping things. One, if you're not on our email list, please email us at spinosahavra at gmail.com. And I'm going to put that in the chat to be added on our mailing list. Um, also, um, we'll mention that... Um, when you're not speaking during the service, uh, and I will be asking for people to do protest help and readings and whatnot, so unmute yourself then. But if you're not speaking, unmute your, uh, keep yourself muted just because it helps to control background noise. Um, also, um, other stuff. Uh, also, I'll mention one thing that we're if if you completed the survey that Martin put out on our Facebook group a few weeks ago, we really appreciate it. it gives us a lot of good information. But if you haven't done the survey, one of the questions in the survey was asking about whether you also happen to be an at-large member of the SHJ. And if you if you are and you didn't respond to the survey, please email us at the Spinoza Haver at Gmail address. The reason is, is that our leadership team, we are in the process of affiliating with the SHJ. And the great thing about that is, is that we've the arrangement we have with the SHJ is that our, any of our Spinoza members who have already who are already at large members of the SHJ, the dues that you paid, are, end up being offset against the obligation we would have as a community to the SHJ. And I think actually, based on how many at large members we have, we may not owe any dues for this year. Hopefully, for the affiliation, or very little. But it would be helpful. Um, I, again, I'm going to check the. Um, I'm checking with the SHJ to see, find out for sure who all we have as members that are already SHJ members. But if you fall into that category and you didn't fill out the survey, shoot us an email just because they'll add us add you to the list of of names we're we're sending to the SHJ for that. And hopefully that will be a few weeks before this will be done. The great thing about the affiliation is once it once that happens, anyone who is a part of the Spinoza Havra. We'll have access to all the resources of the SHJ, including our magazine and some other things. So we're really excited about that. And there'll be some more announcements in the coming weeks as that unfolds a little bit more. But for now, just wanted to mention that if you are you are an SHJ member, please let us know. It'd be very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen this. Get us started. And let me... Actually, not quite yet. I actually have to pull... Get that queued up real quick. So before, let me get my uh, slides for today queued up. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'll hit share screen. So this morning we are our our Torah portion for this week is Kitisa. And so that will be uh, some of the focus of today's service a little bit later on. Also, I'll mention uh just by way of passing that our readings from today are from Martin DiMaggio, uh, who also leads services for the Spinoza Havra. William Thompson wrote one of the pieces we're using, and also the poet Yehuda Amakai. So, um, would someone like to volunteer to read the English text of of this this prayer or this this reading? And if you do, just unmute yourself and go for it.
How good are the dwellings where we gather, serene and vibrant as the gardens by the river, the aloes and the pleasant cedar trees besides the water. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for people to dwell together in harmony. Hine matohu manahim sheveramim gam yakad. Hine matohu manahim sheveramim gam yakad. Hine matohu manim adarad. Hine matohu yadararararam. Hine matohu manahim sheveramim gam And who would like to read uh, Vishomrim? And we, humanity, choose to keep a day of rest as an agreement for all time. For in six days we work, and on the seventh we cease from work and are refreshed. Veshomrim b'nei ha'adam me'et ha'shabat Lasot et ha'shabat le'dot ha'mbarit o'olam Veshomrim b'nei ha'adam et ha'shabat Lasot et ha'shabat le'dot ha'mbarit o'olam Ki sheshet yamim ha'su melaka Hasu Malaka Gishashit Yamim Hasu Malaka Veshomrim Banehadam Mehet Hashabat Lasot et Hashabat Ledot and Berit Olam Veshomrim Banehadam Ehet Hashabat La sot et hashahabat le dort and berit olam. Uva yom hashvi, shav tu vaina fashu, shav tu vaina fashu. Uva yom hashvi, shav tu vaina fashu, veshomrim benehadam et hashahabat. La sot et hashahabat le. And so now for a moment, I'm going to turn off the screen because I want to invite you, if you're if you're on Zoom, you're going to see there's an option where you can see the faces of, 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 of us. And so I'm turning to you to take a moment to look at look at the faces of those that are gathered here with us and to take this moment to set the intention of wishing each of these people a good Shabbat. Uh, to be filled with blessings and to just a sense of connection that we are all together across across all the, sp the distances. We have people from every part of the world today. I know we have, uh, I know just from the chat, we have San Jose, uh, California, Krakow, Poland. We have Winona, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Kennesaw, Georgia, Sao Paulo, Brazil. We have Southwest Florida, Brisbane, Australia, Fort Worth, Texas. I also know we have Massachusetts and we have Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, so just the joy of us being together today. So now we'll go back to share screen for this blessing. And who would like to read this? Bless the community which blesses us. Blessed is the community which blesses forever and ever. And would someone like to to read or sing the Hebrew side? Barku et hakala hamavarag. Baruch hakala hamavarak le'olam vahev. And then who would like to uh, say our version, the on the English side, our version of the Shema?
Listen, Yisrael, our people, our people are one. Humanity is one. Let us work together to improve this world. Shema Yisrael lekad hamenu hadam mekad kulanu nevo letakain et haulam haze. And let us pause for a moment to listen to the world around us. And would someone like to read the left side of the Piafta? And let us love our fellow as ourselves with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. And let these words be always upon our hearts. Impressing them upon our children, reciting them when we stay at home and when we go out, when we lie down and when we get up, binding them as signs in our hand, serving as a symbol on our forehead, inscribing them on the doorposts of our homes and on our gates. This we believe to be true. Humankind is capable of redeeming itself from its troubles. Through our efforts, we heal disease, feed the hungry, lift up and free the downtrodden. We can achieve liberation through reason, compassion, and working together with trust in one another, with faith of a better future for all. Blessed is the light in humanity with which we redeem the world. And we now have a, a poem, and today one of the themes we'll see throughout this service is a theme of creativity, and so I thought bringing in some poetry would be helpful. This one is by Yehuda Amakai, and uh, I picked this poem in part because he this poem tell reflects something that's very common in Jewish museums around the world, which is often there will be either literally an entire synagogue inside of a museum, or more often it will be the furnishings of an old old uh, synagogue. And I'm thinking about we have the Sherwin Miller Museum of Jewish Art in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and in that that museum they have a the what's left of the Muskogee, Oklahoma synagogue, the the, the Torah Ark, the some of the other uh, other pieces, and even some of the pew, the pews from from the old synagogue. And so this poem I thought was kind of neat. Inside the brand new museum, there's an old synagogue. Inside the synagogue is me. Inside me, my heart. Inside my heart, a museum. Inside the museum, a synagogue. Inside it, me. Inside me, my heart. Inside my heart, a museum. And so now, before we move into our, our breath meditation, I would encourage you to kind of take that imagery of the museum, of the synagogue, of our hearts, and that interconnected nature of identity and all of that. Take that, those thoughts with us into this breath meditation. And I'll also mention in this breath meditation, um, this is a t feel free to turn off your camera if you like. Feel free to close your eyes. This is a, a, a meditation or kind of guided breathing exercise. But again, feel free to breathe at your own pace. Uh, the directions are there if it's useful to you. If it's not, that's fine too. Breathing in, I take breath into myself. Breathing out, I join the web of being. Breathing in, I rest in the present. Breathing out, I am part of past and future. Breathing in, I honor the shrine of my body. Breathing out, I honor the shrine of the cosmos. Breathing in, presence fills me. Breathing out, presence enfolds me. Breathing in, I witness what is broken. Breathing out, I bow to what is perfect. 
Breathing in, I offer gratitude for what is. Breathing out, I accept all that changes. Breathing in, I pray for peace for myself. Breathing out, I pray for peace for all beings. We'll pause for a little bit of silent reflection for a minute or so. For the next part of our service, we're now going to engage with a little bit of Torah, um, a little bit of the Torah portion, Kitisa. And there's a lot of good stuff in this Torah portion, including the giving of the Ten Commandments. But I decided to focus on something that I think is a smaller piece, but a really interesting piece. <laughs> so I'm going to share a screen again. And what I'd like to do is if we could have three volunteers. Let's see. I think it's over. Let's see. I got it on... How many pages is it? Uh, okay, it's three pages. So um, I was wondering if someone would like to volunteer to help with these readings um, on the English side. So if someone would like to volunteer, let's see, how can I make this? Sorry, this is kind of cumbersome how this PDF is displaying. Okay. There we go. So who would like to volunteer to read this first, first portion? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get on the screen. There we go. So I'll read the first one, and then if someone would like to be ready to volunteer for the second one, that would be awesome. yod hey vav -Hey spoke to Moses. See, I have singled out by name... Bazalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have endowed him with a divine spirit of skill, ability, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to make designs for work in gold, silver, and copper, to cut stones for setting, and to, to, to carve wood, to work in every kind of craft. And Jan, would you like to read? Sure, yeah, let me just pull it up. Uh, let's see. Do do? Okay, yeah. Um, I just, why does he say Ocha and do you want to read his name? Not so, me. Joy, can you go over that way? <laughs> so, okay, and I'm starting at um, in verse verse six on the on the, the okay. right side, it's in English. Okay, so yeah, moreover, I have assigned to him Oholiab, son of Ahisama, of the tribe of Dan. And I have also granted skill to all who are skillful, that they may make everything that I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the ark of the pat, and the cover upon it, and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils, the pure lampstand, and all its fittings, and all the altar of incense. Thank you. The altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the laver in its stand, the service vestments, the sacral vestments of Aaron the priest and the vestments of his sons for their service as priest, as well as the anointing wall and the aromatic incense for the sanctuary, just as I have commanded you, they shall do. So a bit of context here. We just kind of jumped into it without talking context. So we give a little bit of context. We're at the point of the story where Moses is giving the directions for the building of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a very, very big tent-like structure. Um, tent really doesn't do it justice. It was really big, but it was also meant to still be portable. It was the center of worship for the Hebrews, for the for the Israelites as in, in, the, in the wilderness wanderings. And so what I find super interesting about this text is the specific choosing of this person, uh, Belalel, oh no, Bez, Bezalel, um, 
for this task and was given he was given an assistant who would also be working with him and was it was also the assumption is many other people will be working working on this project as well but Bezalel, Bezalel was was in this role of being the the create not just a supervisor not just a foreman but actually the creative uh, director of this project you might say and what's interesting was it was not just the building but it was everything. It was the creation of the incense. It talked about the the vestments, the clothing of the priest, just the whole production. I mean, in fact, to me, when I was reading this, I was just this last week, I got to my family and I went to see the Broadway play Wicked, which is on tour here in Oklahoma City. And seeing a Broadway production, you see the sets and you see the costumes and you see all the people in, and you read the program of all the people involved and you know, of course, it mentions all the unions that that represents all the different classes of workers that work on a Broadway production. It's enormous. Well, in many ways, building the tabernacle was in many ways like a Broadway production. It's that that level of of work. And so I thought for our for today, I'm, I'm going to share a screen again for a moment because we have some discussion questions. Um, and so these discussion questions are. Um, the. And what we're going to do is we're going to break out rooms in a second. So I'm going to put these in the chat as well, these questions. Um, just let me do that real. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, but these questions are this. This text that speaks of Belazel being inspired with divine spirit. So how do we read this humanistically? Are there ways of reading, reading this in a humanistic lens? Or is this something that eh, we don't really believe? That's the first question. Second question, what role does art and creativity play in your Jewish life? Three, should the arts be an endeavor for only specially trained and especially skilled people? I think you could read this text and say, oh, only the professionals. Um, I'm, I'm curious what, what do folks think about that, that issue. And finally, what do we think about the traditional practice of avoiding activities that involve creating things on Shabbat? Uh, for people who follow the traditional rules, they don't write or draw or anything like that. So what do we think about that? So those are the questions we'll be taking with us into our breakout groups. Real quick, I'm going to put the questions again in the chat. And let's see, we have 17 people. So... I think I'm going to break this us up into four groups. So let me do to set up the breakout rooms. And we're going to be in the breakout rooms for about 10 minutes. Um, and then when we come back together, we'll share a little bit from what we've been talking about. So you might think about two as a group, uh, maybe picking a, one person to report back some, some of the, what, what you all discussed. So we'll go ahead and... Create the breakout rooms, and we'll see you back here in about – oh, one other thing, just so you know, the recording does does not record in the breakout room. So if you're not wanting to be on the recording, not a problem, but feel free to talk freely in the breakout rooms because it's not recorded. So anyway, you should get an invitation to join the breakout rooms, and we'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been a good conversation because everyone came in at the last minute. So, <laughs> so for our groups, I think the first group was Gabrielle, Henrique, Janet, and Skip. From y'all's group, what what are some of the things that 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 you all talked about? Um, I actually would like to invite um, two members of ours to just briefly comment on what <clears throat> what they shared if they, if if they're willing. Um, uh, I would, uh, first of all, like Janet to, to kind of recap her ideas about, um, kind of the neuroscience of creativity in response to the first question. And then, um, Henrik, uh, if you would be willing to share your thoughts in response to the second question. So what I was saying is that for me, God is evolution. And um, because I think of God as evolution and, and actually our physical biology, um, when you understand the neuroscience of the creative process, you understand that there is 
Um, this is a combination of three states of the human mind uh, actively engaged in, in uh, functioning in certain ways, uh, which is totally understandable from uh, lots of research into creativity. And creativity is not only in terms of physical art, in terms of music um, and literature, in terms of writing. So it's not that they just studied one kind of creativity. Um, and uh, it helps if you understand that there's a um, kind of a, a brainstorming side and a um, that um, goes back and forth with a cognitive analysis side. And it goes, uh, goes the easiest way to explain this, and if I don't have slides, um, is, to, is that your brain naturally starts shifting in these two places going back and forth. And in terms of doing both physical art and those other kinds of creative um, activities. So there, it makes total sense that you would have inspiration. And if this is spiritual inspiration, it might also include your temporal lobes, which have a tendency that temporal parietal area is the part of the under spec scans that shows activation in terms of trying to connect to the wholeness or the oneness um, of, of experience. So to me, that this makes a lot of sense biologically. There's nothing that isn't totally in line with humanistic thinking for me personally. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like Kenrick's uh, microphone, unfortunately, um, isn't working since we came back from the the uh, breakout room. But um, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to recall what his comments were they're leaving my mind at the moment but that's okay we can i think we can go ahead and move on but thanks to everybody in my group who participated oh thank you thank you so yeah i think that oh, oh i was ahead. just gonna say that i think that uh that person said that they um liked having this experience of having a humanistic um uh, connection to um art and it's a way to express um their experience of the Torah, um, not just reading it. Um, so I think that's part of what they were explaining. And also in terms of that, um, several of us, me included, said that the weekend is, at, this is the fourth question, that the weekend is the most important time. So Shabbat is the best time for creativity, not the worst time. So um, since I do, I work full time, the only times I have time to be creative are uh, on the on the weekends in a long stretch. So to me, it's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I think several people said that as well. Yeah. Thank you. The second group was David, Jeffrey, Catherine, and Tali. What are some of the observations your group came up with? Well, we talked a lot about... Um skilled artists versus like the rest of us and um we seem to be very largely in agreement that there's something to be said for the work of a skilled artist that um works by other people still have value but um there's something to be said for knowing what you're doing when you're doing art Mm -hmm. And um, we also seem to be saying, in answer to the question of what role does art play in your life, uh, that we, we seem to be saying that we'd like to be doing more of it. Mm hmm Excellent. Our third group was, and I'm not quite sure how to say this name, Guilherme, maybe? Uh, Guilherme? Uh, uh, it's Guilherme. Guilherme. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And Paula and Betty Ann, what, what did your group talk about? Um, we talked about, we, we, all, we agreed that everyone should, who feels inspired to do art should do art. We didn't think about it in terms of professional needs, like you know, the, the Torah portion actually did talk about more like the professional needs of the group, but we didn't talk about that. Um, uh, what were the other questions? Let me see. 
Um, just help me remember. Uh, oh, we we oh, uh, Guillermo felt and we agreed that the arts are a way to preserve culture and mm -hmm. preserve Jewish culture. Yeah, and, and yeah. Just as we were leaving, Betty Ann said that, and if you're Jewish, you're doing Jewish culture. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. by definition. Um, it's Jewish art. Any, Jewish any art. Arts you that you do is Jewish art. Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned that if you just take away the divine, I think ins inspiration is a real thing. Um, but not divine. Um, and and we, uh, we, I felt certain, I think we all felt that doing it on the Sabbath was a good time to do it. In other words, for me, doing something on the Sabbath is whatever's enjoyable and, mm -hmm. and not too serious and not, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. No, and the yeah. arts are, we, we believe strongly in the value of, of all the the arts um, in the world and in our lives, and and we do that. Every, you know, we try to do that every yeah. day in some way. Yeah. Um, whether it's. Do you do want to um, add anything to that? Yeah. I think it's that that is that I was talking about uh, arts preserves uh, a Jewish life and a strong more your community. Next slide. The last group was Perla, Dawn, and Suzanne. What were some of the thoughts that your group had? Um, so um, we talked some about the work of Time Potok, and specifically, my name is Asher Lev. And I don't know if um, this is, I think it was Suzanne or was it Carol that was bringing that up? And I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. Um, if it, well, oh, there's Suzanne. Uh, no, um, we had a really good discussion talking about a wide amount of stuff. I happened to bring up uh, the book, My Name is Asher Lev by Tayan Potok. And it talks about, um, a Hasidic community where a uh, artist emerges from and kind of the breaking point for um, him with his community is a painting he paints of his parents at a window. The way the window frame is uh, painted, it's basically he's painting them uh, in front of a, a crucifix. And just how devastating that is to him, his family, and what it does to the community as a whole. And uh, I was just th talking about the divine spirit and how I thought um, that it's possible that to have that um, brain, um, intellect, emotional connection um, that isn't necessarily from a, you know, a, 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 a supernatural plane, but that in, in fact, does inspire, which inspire the the Latin, I think root of that is is spirit. Um, so that's that's how I looked at it, and I think I also agreed with someone else about that. Um, there's something to be said for people who are talented and creative, and and um, have worked very hard to hone their craft. That um, there's value to that. Um, everyone, everyone's art is should be valued, but there's something to be said for those who really hone their craft. Mm -hmm. Well, are there other thoughts that maybe that haven't been brought up yet, or anyone who maybe hasn't spoken who would like to speak? We'll we'll have a little more space before we move on to the rest of the service. Um, I will mention for myself, I was I really enjoyed thinking about this issue of inspiration throughout this last week. And um, I think there's lots of ways human beings put themselves into more creative states. Um, I think it's really interesting that um, 
certainly uh, meditation, meditative processes sometimes are, are, are something, sometimes a matter of the social context. I'm thinking about collaborative events such as uh, Burning Man, uh, things like that where people gather and out of that collective energy creation happens. Also, somewhat controversially, but I'll mention the role of, of psychedelics in the arts. And I think there's uh, a lot of arguments he made in, in, the, in the, even in Jewish circles that, that this may have been present even in the, among the ancient Israelites. And so there's lots of possibilities, but it is interesting that humans have often framed creativity as being something outside themselves, something that comes from outside rather than from the inside out. And I think maybe the humanistic part of the of the equation is reminding us that um, we have integrity ourselves. We have our own, we are our own beings. And so creativity is comes from within as well. It's not just about the external. So are there other thoughts that like folks would like to share? Um, following up on that, it is interesting, like, but I do get a sense sometimes when I'm engaged in creative work that it does come somehow. I don't know where it comes from. And I do think it's a mix of all the experiences, all the things that I have probably picked up on at a level that my conscious brain is not necessarily aware of. And so it can have this sense of coming from something bigger beyond me. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed this with writing um especially with fiction writing i have characters speaking to me i don't necessarily create when it's going well it's like they are talking to me and i am a scribe or mm -hmm. when i um i'm a woodworker and like when i'm in my shop and working on designs there is this sense of me showing up and then it like there is somehow this accumulation or there is something like out in this like universe that kind of passes through me. And that's when the work is going really well, which you mentioned like the flow state, Gabrielle, right? It, that does have that sense. But I don't know that I would necessarily say, <clears throat> or I would be comfortable saying it comes from something supernatural, though it has, I have that sense of it being something um, beyond me. However, it does require my very human diligence and practice and showing up and failing and failing and failing and still showing up because without all of that and all that failure and all that practice, like I'm not available for any kind of inspiration too. Mm -hmm. Right. So I see those like flip sides. And I think if I were a more, I, I don't know, like spiritual or whatever, spiritually inclined kind of person, I would probably be like, Oh, I am just like a conduit <laughs> for something. But I, that's not necessarily um, my nature, though it comes across that way. Mm. Probably especially appreciate hearing from you, your ex experiences as a creator, as a woodworker, as someone who's engaged in creative processes and what that looks like for you. That's really helpful to hear. It's also why on I would say like on Shabbat, I, I don't do creative stuff. <laughs> this is like my day to zone out. I read a lot. I watch movies, but I'm not necessarily producing anything on the weekend because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and that kind of gets into the nature of Shabbat. I think I'm more and more convinced that part of Shabbat for most people is doing different things. And so for those of us who don't get to have as much creativity during the week, then Shabbat is the time to be more creative. For folks who creativity is your job, it makes sense that that wouldn't necessarily be restful. Or if it's something that's a major part of your life the rest of the week, why, you know, I think this is the great thing about Shabbat. It is something malleable that that fits human needs and it's okay for it to do that. At least I think so. Well, we will continue this conversation in our own egg time in a little bit, but let's go ahead. I'm going to share a screen again. And we'll come back through the rest of our service. Oh, wrong screen. Let's see over here. Yeah, there we go. So we now turn our hearts and minds towards those who need our love, who are ill, who are lonely, who suffer pain, and who have been wronged. 
let us pause as we call out their name. So feel free to either speak out their names out loud or to put them in the chat. Today, I'm thinking about my father-in-law, Carrie. He's having some health issues. Um, Eddie Byers, Nancy Ford. My sister-in-law, Mary Harchick, who's got colon cancer. Thinking of my wonderful uh, neighbor, Charlotte, who broke her leg, and my cousin, who is in the hospital, Don. I'm thinking about my brother, Jack, who recently has uh, slipped um, significantly into dementia. Mm. I'm thinking about my uh, friend, Harold, who's having a lot of back pain. For each of these loved ones, our friends, our family, people that we care about, we we think of them now. We we commit ourselves to finding ways to show in kindness and love to them and our, our earnest desires that they would not feel alone in their time of struggle and that they would know they are cared for and loved, loved. Let us make peace in the world. Let us make peace for us, for all Israel and for all humanity, and we say Amen. Nase Shalom Baholam. Nase Shalom Aleinu. Ve'alko Yisrael. Ve'alko Yoshvetevel. Ve'noma. May all who suffer know they are not alone. May they experience refuah lema, the renewal of body and spirit. Mekom hakorak betokenu, mekorot habarka meke rotenu. May the source of strength that dwells so deep within us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing, and let us say. Amen. And yes, you probably noticed I got those two slides out of order. So I apologize for that, but hopefully it still flowed okay. And we now come to our time for the Mourner's Kaddish. And so for for today, if there, there are names that we are remembering today, please put them in the chat or uh, speak their names out loud at this time. I know that uh, Suzanne... Sorry, I accidentally hit, hit raise hand. Oh, right? no problem. So let me look at the chat real quick. I know we have uh, Philip Krause, Faye Krause. I don't know if Valerie put, was it, which, which of our family members was it that passed? I think it was a, a mother-in-law, possibly. Mother-in-law. Okay, so for Valerie's mother-in-law. We have Gladys, we have Ed, sorry, he's jumping, the chat jumped to me, Ed, Ed v, Vina, Herman, and Marilyn Harchick. So for all of these people, and of course everyone else that may be in our hearts that we haven't named, we, we think of them at this moment. And if it's, if you're able to, uh, please stand May there be a good remembrance and compassion and kindness and love from all the world upon the names of our honorable loved ones who have passed from the world. Let us make a place in our hearts to remember their good names, a good memory, and let us honor them with good deeds. May their memory be a blessing forever. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And now we're coming towards the close of the service. Um, this is kind of where we've been kind of, we see the kind of the flow, the rhythm of things. And we're now at this place that of, of towards the end of 
but of uh, recognizing this moment in time. It is upon us to praise the beauty of the world, even as we fall and rise up, and to continue the work of repairing the world. For within us is the power to build and repair, and it is in our hands to bring about liberation. And one day humanity will be united and one in purpose. And now, if you have wine or juice handy, it is time for Kadoosh. So we raise our glasses and we recite. The sixth day and on the seventh day, we complete the labor with which we perform. And we refrain on the seventh day from all our labor and we bless the seventh day and set it aside. For we refrain from all the labor which we have to do. And now keeping our glasses raised, we say this. Yom Hashi Vekal Bayom Hashvi Hamileka Asher Neesta. Batishibot Bayom Hashvi Kol Hamileka Asher Neesta. Neverek et Yom Hashvi Van Kadesh Oto. Kivo Shavatanu Mikol Hamileka Asher Bakanu Lasot. Sabri, Kabarim Vekabarot. Attention, friends, and we raise our glasses some more. Baruch Hahor Bakayim, Bure Puri Hagafen. We all say together, Amen. And then, if you have bread handy, it's time to lift it up. Blessed are those that bring forth bread from the earth. Berakim Hamotzim Lekim Min Haretz. Amen. And Shabbat Shalom. And that, now that we are, uh, our service is done, we're now moving into our optional Oneg art activity. And so for, I'm going to turn off the screen share. And so the idea here, and I got the idea from, I've taken some classes occasionally from the Unyeshiva, and it's a school that's sponsored by the folks behind the Judaism Unbound podcast. And one of my favorite classes I've taken with them was actually an art class. And we were challenged to, it was, we were theoretically making a comic book. Um, most of us were not at the level being able to at, put together a whole comic book, but we were still kind of riffing off of that theme. And so during a class times, we would get together on Zoom and create art together. And as we were creating art, we would talk and visit, but mostly we we're just a space to create art. And so my suggestion this morning is if you have some art supplies, and again, it does not have to be, be anything fancy. It could literally be if you have a pen and ink pen and a piece of paper, that's good enough. Because this is more about the, the process, the flow of it, than the, than the final product. And so for the next, we're going to keep the, the, the uh, Zoom on for the next, until probably about 1030 my time. So but, but for the next 25 or so minutes. But in this time, my encouragement is if you want to create in this space, in this time, great. But otherwise, it's here for conversation. We can chat about some of the things we've been talking about previously. Um, but I'm, what I'm kind of envisioning is a little bit of what I were, of, of that art class I did, where we, we were really just, we were all working on our things. Sometimes the, the conversation would be lively. Sometimes there'd be good stretches of silence because we were all working on our art. But um, the idea is we're just having this space and kind of as a, a prelude to some uh, Shabbat joy for the, for the rest of Shabbat. Um, what if you, before we do that, I do want to mention a few more housekeeping issues. Again, just a reminder, uh, if you have, if you are an SHJ at-large member and you didn't send in the survey, uh, please let us know. Um, and I'm going to put in the chat, Spinoza, Havra, at gmail.com is our email address. If you can email us there and let us know if you're an at-large member, that would be very helpful to us. And again, the reason is, is that uh, we otherwise are responsible for dues of about $500 for the year, but anyone who's paid out large dues, that gets offset against that. And I think, again, I think we have enough SHJ members already that we're going to meet that line. But it does help to know who you are. Uh, I'll also mention in the coming weeks, we're probably going to have some more information out about the SHJ affiliation, because one of the things is we're going to we have not had a formal membership of our Havra up to this point, but we will at least need to have some loose listings so that we can make sure everyone gets the magazine and some things like that. So uh, keep an eye out in your email boxes for some information about that in the coming weeks. 
And um, other than that, tomorrow is our Humanistic Judaism 101 class. That session is being taught by Martin. And I think the topic, let me double check that, but I believe the topic is on the High Holy Days. And so I know it's a little bit out of order doing them now, but kind of I think the reason why we, we put this put the High Holidays at this point in the schedule is the idea of sometimes during the high holidays, it's kind of hard to have the time to think about the high holidays, to think about what's going on. And so the idea is that um, being able to think about it well in advance gives us a chance to, to have our best uh, hot, high holiday experience. So I think that's the theme of, of, of the class. So um, I'll put in the chat in just a moment the, the link, the Zoom link, and also our link to our class resource page slash syllabus if, if anyone hasn't been to our classes yet. Also, I'll mention if you haven't been to our classes yet, but you want to get caught up, that is definitely doable. We have all the classes uh, recorded and are on YouTube, and we have a link for that we can share as well. So you get caught up with the recordings. And we do have, I think in May or June, I have to check on the calendar, but we are planning a special uh, adult be mitzvah service of sorts for people who have completed the class. Um, and so we, we have some things, special things coming up. So I encourage you if you want to participate, uh, that's just around the corner. So other than that, thank you everyone for being here and we'll kind of move into some creative art mode and conversation. So.